This message is coming to you from Holiness Revival Ministry Worldwide, also known as Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Listen attentively as Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of the Movement, ministers to you in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will surely be blessed. The Word of God that comes to you today will do some special work in your life. Jesus mighty name we pray. Our Father, we thank and bless your name because we enjoy a lot of privileges because we are children. Thank you for being good unto us. Thank you for welcoming us into your presence. Father, this evening your children will come and each one will be making his or her request and God you are going to answer us. Thank you for the answers. In Jesus' name. We bless your name and worship. We love to be in your presence. We are your children. And we will serve you forever. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible tells us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace. And not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. This evening we are listening to the word. Ask what I shall give thee. Ask what I shall give thee. God is a prayer answering God. And he invites people to pray unto him. Asking and receiving. It's a good relationship God wants to establish with men. He wants to establish a relationship with you. A relationship of asking and receiving. In Psalm 65, verse 2, the Bible tells us, Say, oh, 65 verse 2, oh, thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Oh, you that hear prayer, that's the testimony of people. People know God as a God that hears prayers. The new God as a God that hears prayers. And they say, unto him shall all flesh come. All families come. Every member of the family should learn to come to God. He that hears prayers, 
the man should come. The woman should come. The children should come. Because he is the God that he has prayers. Every member of the church should know God as the one that he has prayers. The church is serving the God that he has prayers. And unto him all of us will come. Prayer is a privilege for God to say, Ask what I shall give thee. What a great privilege. What a great privilege that you have opportunity to ask. And God is the one that invited you to ask. He's the one that said, Come on, ask. A great privilege. It is the demonstration of God's grace. God is all good. He wants to flow out to you in goodness and kindness. Therefore, He said, Come on us. Come and ask. I want to show forth my kindness. I want to show forth my goodness to your life. Therefore, Come and ask. Prayer is manifestation of His mercy. The manifestation of God's mercy. He knows we can't on our own. He knows we cannot achieve it on our own. He knows we can't get there on our own. He knows we cannot win the battle on our own. He knows we cannot attempt it. We cannot deliver ourselves. He knows we cannot get what we are looking for. By our own power. That's why in mercy. He invites us to come and pray. Come and call on to me. Come and ask me. Ask of me. Because. I am interested to help you. I am interested to bless you. To give you the expected end. Yes. Prayer is the means of receiving God's blessing. By prayer. We receive from God. I want to talk to you on. Prayer promises. Number two. Prayer power. And number three. Prayer privilege. Number one, prayer promises. The Lord encourages us to ask in prayer and assures us of answers to our requests. He said in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 7 and 8. Ask. The Lord is saying, ask. The Lord is calling on you to come and ask. The Lord is saying, there is door open for you. Come and ask. And it shall be given you. Seek. And ye shall find. Knock. And it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Ask. Some know how to ask. Some people are good at asking. Some are good at asking from human beings. But poor at asking from God. But there are people that are good at asking from God. They are blessed people. They are those that ask from the source. They are asking from the creator. Ask. And it shall be given unto you. 
But some know not how to ask. And therefore they bear their burden. They carry their sorrows. They remain in their pain. Why? They cannot ask. They cannot ask. They are getting weaker and weaker. Why? They are not asking. They don't know victory in their lives. Because they don't ask, they live from shame to shame. Because they don't ask, they are always in fear. Because they don't ask. If you find yourself living in shame, it's because you don't ask. If you find yourself always discouraged, it's because you don't ask. If you find yourself defeated all the time, it's because you don't ask. If you find yourself always afraid, it's because you don't ask. But the Lord is saying, ask, and it shall be given unto you. There are some that are discouraged. Because they said, I have asked. You have asked, keep on asking. That's what God is saying. Never you get discouraged in that business. Keep on asking. He didn't give you a first asking. He could, for he does. But he didn't give you a first asking. Go further. He's training you. Is training you on patience. He's putting some materials into your life. Spiritual blessings into your life. He's energizing you. He's inviting you for a work with Him. So you can get acquainted with Him. Keep on asking. He likes that. Every time you make a request, a good time before God. And He's assuring you. It's not in vain. He will answer. In the book of Luke chapter, chapter 11, verse 5, to verse 10, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, Lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, and yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Here God is saying, a man went to his neighbor, but this man was not just his neighbor, but was afraid. And knocked at the door in the midnight. And said, I have a problem. I have a visitor. And I don't have food to give the visitor. Can you give me some food? So I can give the visitor. He said, can this friend say, don't trouble me. It's night already. I am on bed. My children are on bed. Will he say so? I want to, to give you two reasons why that man will have his request. Number one, he is his friend. He will not disappoint his friend. Number two, because of his continual asking, because he is his friend, he keeps on asking. He keeps on asking confidently because I'm dealing with a friend. So, for these two reasons, that man will have his request. Number one, his friend. Number two, the importunity. Importunity means 
continually doing the same thing. Here is continual asking. Continually asking. Asking and asking and never giving up. So, Jesus Christ therefore said, in verse 9, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. If you ask one time, it doesn't work. Keep on asking. He is your father. Go along with him and keep on asking. He is your father. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, keep on seeking from him. You shall find. No, keep on knocking at your father. The door shall be opened unto you. Jesus again said in the book of Luke, chapter 18, I read from verse 1 to verse 8. And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that means ought only ways to pray. And not to faint. Me ought always to pray. Because we are serving a prayer answering God. Let us not make God idol. Let us not make God idol. He answers first. Give God something he will answer. It's part of his nature. To answer prayer. Therefore, me but always to pray, to pray for yourself, and to pray for others, to pray for your personal, your situation, and to pray for the situation of others, to pray for your family, and to pray for the family of others, to pray for your society, to pray for other societies, to pray for your nation, pray for other nations. Me, but always to pray, and not to say. You pray for your church. Pray for other church, other churches. You pray for your denomination. Pray for other denominations. Me ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man, and there was. A widow in that city. And she came unto him saying. Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward. He said within himself. Though I fear not God. Nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubled me. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Here is prayer with fear. Prayer against your enemies. Prayer against the devil. The forces of darkness contending with you. But the force here is a strong force. It's a strong force. The power you're contending with is a strong power. Like this widow. The Bible says that church was a wicked church. He does not fear God. Neither did he regard, it, did he regard me. Then who will move him? Here was this widow. Helpless woman. And this widow came to him. And said they are cheating me. My my opponent is taking away my property. This judge the case between me and my opponent and give me back my property. But this judge was so wicked. He didn't respect the widow. He didn't pity the widow. But there was one instrument that widow used. And the Lord revealed that that instrument is so powerful against the enemy. That instrument, that weapon, so powerful against the enemy. It is continual praying. Continual coming. Continual coming. Continual coming. Every time that widow came, there was an impression in that man. That wicked man. There was a kind of a resistant force. There was a kind of a torment on that wicked man. Every time that widow came and stood in her helpless way and stood in 
her weak way, but she came. She came at all. And she set out those weights. And those weights went right into that wicked man. Although the man was resisting, but his resistance died with time. His resistance faded with time. And he came up and bowed. Eventually, he said, I am dying. I beg us to do this matter. Otherwise, I'm restless. I am restless by the weapon of continual coming. The Lord is saying, however powerful those demon forces are, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on calling the name of Jesus. Keep on reciting the scriptures. Keep on praying. Every time you pray, if you, 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 you have, you have released a great force against that thing. Every time. Every time you say something. Every time you pray. Every time you cut promises. Every time you sing a song against that thing. Every time you manifest your faith. It's a great force against that opposition. It will eventually bow in your life. That's the revelation. Continual coming. Where do we strike at one? Just once and run. Strike once and run. No. Keep on doing it. Sometimes we really strike the enemy first. The enemy falls. But remember, he will rise. Where do you give up? Keep on with him. Keep on bombarding him until he gives away from your life. So, then the Lord now said, Can you hear? And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Unjust. Wicked judge. See how he gave up and solved the problem of that woman. He then, he then said, And shall not go. Avenge his own elect. Which cry day and night unto him. Though he be alone with them, he would he could choose to be alone. But he wants you to cry day and night. He chose to be alone. For a reason, for his wisdom. Not because he will not do it. But he wants you to cry on. He wants you to pray on. He wants you to keep on praying. Day and night. No beloved prayer forces. Then he said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? What makes people to give up is because they have no faith. What makes them to stop praying is because Satan has filled them with doubts. Otherwise, if you knew that road you are taking is the right road, you will continue around, however distant it is. You will keep on going and know eventually you will arrive at your destination. It's because you started doubting the road. That's why you gave up. That's why you turned away. How could you doubt God? God! God! There's, there's answer in God. There's salvation in God. There's safety in God. There's provision in God. Keep on going. There's assurance on that way. There's certainty in that way. Keep on praying. You will find God. You will find the answer in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us twice. In the book of John chapter 14, Verses 12 to 14. John 14. Verse 12 to verse 14. Here the Bible says, Verily, verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will 
do it. Ask in my name. Ask in my place. Ask for my sake. Ask for my glory. Ask the Father in my name as my representative. And I am telling you, whatever you shall ask as my representative of earth, it shall be given unto you. Whatever resources you need for the work of the Lord, ask, I will supply the equipment you need, the materials you need, the resources you need to make you do the work, to make you live the Christian life, to make you live the godly life, to make you evangelize and be fruitful in life. Ask whatever you desire that will make you fruitful in Christ and it shall be given unto you. It shall be done unto you. What do you want to make you better as a Christian? What do you want to make you stronger as a believer? What do you want to make you effective, more effective as a Christian? Jesus Christ said, whatsoever you want, that will make you better in Christ, stronger in Christ, more useful in Christ, more joyful in Christ, more fruitful in Christ. Ask and it shall be given unto you. That's what the Lord is saying. Yes. Ask. Ask for greater works. Because he said, I am going to my Father. Greater works than this you shall do. Ask therefore for greater works. Greater works. Ask that God to increase anointing in your life. Jesus is assuring you. That is asking. That's positive prayer. That's prayer that glorifies God. With anointing increases in your life. When wisdom increases in your life, when the gifts of the Spirit manifest in your life, God will be glorified. God will be glorified. And Jesus is assuring you. Ask. Ask for the greater manifestation of the power of God in your life and in your ministry. Pray that the Lord will make revelations. Manifest His power. Ask for greater grace. Greater grace and power. Ask for anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us in Acts of Apostles. Chapter 4. Verse 29 to verse 33. It says, And now, Lord, behold their threatening. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. You can see what they ask. Ask it for the name of Jesus. For the glory of Jesus. For the advancement of the gospel of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 30, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking. Where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spread the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common and with great power. Get the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Why? They asked and the Lord answered. They asked and God answered. Let the church of God ask for greater grace, greater power, 
Let the church of God ask for the presence of God. For the authority of God in the church. Jesus is saying, it shall be granted. He says, ask and receive. He says, whatsoever you shall ask, it shall be done unto you. Ask that it shall be done unto you so that my Father shall be glorified. When I do those things for you, my Father will be happy. My Father will be promoted. The name of God will spread. God wants you to make, to ask. Ask anything. Whatsoever you can ask. That God will demonstrate His power in your life. And His name will spread everywhere. People will give glory to Him. Everywhere. That's what God wants. He says, but was asked in righteousness. Acts in righteousness. In John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Make sure you abide in Christ. Make sure you are living the Christian life. Make sure you are an obedient child of God. Make sure you are committed to the holiness of Christ. That you abide in Christ. And the word of truth abides in you. You are practicing the word. You are living by the world in your personal life, in your marital life, in your family life. You are living by the world in your business life. You are living by the world in your academic life. You are living by the world. Then you can ask. You are, now, you are a child of God. You belong to God. The Lord now said, you can ask anything you want. What is in your will? What do you want? Ask. God says, it shall be done unto you. Yes. God will open the doors for your life. Ask and receive. In the book of John chapter 16. I read verse 23 and 24. John chapter 16 verse 23 the Bible says and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily I say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name he will give it to you he that all have ye asked nothing in my name Ask and receive. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask. God is interested that you should be happy and joyful. He said, Ask anything. God is saying, Anything. Ask anything. Anything that comes to your heart that you sincerely desire, anything you want to be done that will make you happy, anything that you feel should not happen, if it does not happen, you will be happy that it has not happened. You are a child of God. The work of righteousness is in you. And you know you want to stop some evil. Stop something from happening. Ask. It shall be given unto you. The Bible tells us of Daniel. When the people promised that whoever prayed to any other God was going to be turned to the day of the lions, Daniel would have asked and said, God, seal up the lions. 
fill up the mouth of the lions. That's everything. And it happened exactly. When Daniel was turned to the den of the lions, their mouths were sealed. Yes, God can do anything for you that will give him glory and give you joy. That's why he said, ask anything. In my name, and it shall be given unto you. I heard of a man. He came to the airport. He came late, the man of God. And the plane had taken off already. And the plane was in the air going. And yet he wanted to go to, go to, to I mean, he wanted to go to his destination. So, it came to his mind. God said, ask anything. Ask. It shall be given unto you. He lifted up his eyes and said, Oh God, I want to go on my journey. And the plane has left. But I am asking that, that this plane that is going should come back and pick me. Praise the Lord. Has it happened like that before? Don't mind whether it has ever happened or not. Just pray. God is saying you are he will do it for your love. He wants to magnify himself. He wants to glorify himself. He wants people to see him. When situations are difficult, and you bring such difficult situations before God, and God manifests for his glory, people will believe God. When that man of God prayed, the pilot felt that he forgot something. And so he turned back again. He turned back and landed again. And rolled back to his stand again. Because he thought he had forgotten something. Come, who, who did he forget? I said, who person he forgot? Is the man of God. Because God has said, Ask! It shall be given unto you. That's what God says. Ask. You want to go to school? Ask. Sometimes you think it depends on your, your, your intelligence. Ask God you want to go to school. Ask God you want to marry. Ask God you want to do business. Ask God for your health. Maybe you even have HIV AIDS. Keep on asking God. You want to be healed. You have these sicknesses that say they only manage them with diet. You manage them with drugs. Let the request there before God. Constantly. Ask. Is it not God that says you should ask? Is it not the creator that says you should ask? That you should bring that matter and table it before him? Just ask. You will be an obedient child indeed if you can ask. It will be done. That's how the pilot came again. And the man of God entered. Everybody knew. How would they not know? That yes, this is a man of faith. We came back because of this man. We came into this. We came back. There is a God in heaven that answers prayers. God wants to do something in your life. So that the testimony will spread. And people will do through your life that there is a God that answers prayers. That there is a God in heaven. Nebuchadnezzar said, there is no God after this, after, there is no God that can do after this manner. No God except the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because of hard circumstance. I challenge you. I invite you. Bring the difficulty of your life before God. Bring the difficulty of that case before God. And place, place it there before the Lord. And let's watch our God demonstrate His power over your life. And the testimony shall move. The testimony shall spread. And the Lord shall be glorified. In the book of Psalm. Psalm 34. 
verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. To verse 6. I'm talking about testimony to the glory of God because you are. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and He helped me, and delivered me from all my fears. Everybody, verse 4, are you there? Let's read verse 4 together. One, two, go. The Lord is saying, bring your fears before Him. The Lord is saying, bring that thing that is causing fear in your mind. God will deliver you from all your fears. And you will be so happy in life. Those things that are threatening, they will not be there anymore. I said they will not be there anymore. That fear that you are thinking, that thing that is hanging as if it will come down and explode in your house, it shall not be there anymore. The Bible says, I sought the Lord. And He had me. And delivered me. The Lord has asked me to come and tell you. You should seek Him. He will hear you and He will deliver you. Again, it's in verse 4, they looked unto Him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. They looked unto Him. Circumstances were to make them ashamed before their neighbors. Before their colleagues, before their fellow students, before their fellow workers, before church members, circumstances were to make them ashamed, but they sought the Lord. There's a God that is concerned for you in heaven. There's a God that does not want you to be ashamed, child of God. There's a God that wants that does not want you to, to be ashamed, to be embarrassed. There's God in heaven. Seek unto our God. He will hear you. And your shame shall disappear. That thing that is to make you ashamed shall not come anymore. God will know how to do it. God knows how to manipulate all things. God knows how to construct things. God knows what to do. Your shame will disappear like clouds in the sky. And again, in verse 6, this poor man cried. And the Lord had him. And saved him out of all his troubles. I don't know how many troubles you have, woman. Many, many troubles. Many, many troubles. You count them, all your ten fingers. You have counted all your ten fingers. The troubles are more. You go to count your toes. You have counted them. The troubles are more. But our God will deliver you from all of those troubles. I say He will deliver you from all of those troubles. I promise you, young man, this is the God we serve. There's benefit in serving God. I'm turning your heart to Him. I'm turning your faith to Him. I am asking you to look at Him. Because I know certainly, so assured in my heart, the Lord will intervene in your life. The money you're looking for is going to come. Yes, it will come. How will it come? Leave it to God. When it comes, He will come and give us testimony. In the book of Psalm 66, Verse 16 to 20. Psalm 66. Verse 16. Come and hear. All ye that fear God. And I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. I re if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 
God verily God hath helped me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Come! And I will declare unto you what the Lord has done for my soul. That's the voice of a saint. That's the voice of a child of God. Be comfort a child of God. See, your brother here is giving testimony for what the father did for him. Sister, see, your brother here is giving testimony for what the Lord has done for him. Your sister is giving testimony for what the Lord has done for her. You will give testimony also. I say, you will give testimony also. He said, come, I will declare unto you what the Lord has done for my soul. Yes, I cried. I cried. I cried unto him with my mouth. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and he was exposed with my, with my tongue. But I was righteous. I confessed all my sins. I repented from all my sins. And I served him in righteousness. So there was no iniquity in my heart. That's why the Lord helped me. The Lord attended to the voice of my prayer. My prayer entered heaven. My prayer entered heaven. Oh, let the clouds give way and let your prayer enter heaven. Let the stars of heaven give way and let your prayer enter heaven. I say let your prayer enter heaven. That is our prayer today. That the prayer, your prayer, your prayer, your prayer will enter heaven. And that God will hear your prayers. I said the creator will hear your prayers. The maker of your soul will hear your prayers. The deliverer of your soul will hear your prayers. The God of impossibilities. That God, the merciful God. That's why the psalmist said, Blessed be God, who hath not turned away my prayer. No, his mercy from me. God will listen. God will listen. I am saying God will listen. He will bow down the ear. He will bring his ear closer to you. As you're muttering those prayers with stammering lips. As you're muttering that in even a crying tongue. As you're muttering those prayers, God will come closer. God will bring his ears closer. He will hear your prayers. He will hear your prayers. He will hear. And you will be peaceful in your life. That's why he said, Ask. That's God. He's telling you to ask. Ask you read. In the time of rain. In the book of Zechariah chapter 10. I read this word. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says, Ask ye of the Lord, read in the time of the later rain. So, the Lord shall meet bright clouds, to everyone grab in the field. Ask ye rain. The environment is dry. The cry is clear. Everywhere looks dusty. Ask God rain. When you ask God rain, the Lord will meet bright clouds. When you ask God rain, the Lord will cause the lightning to come upon the sky. When you ask God rain, the Lord will cause the thunder to blow. When you ask God rain, the Lord will cause the wind to blow. The wind that carries the water, the Lord will cause the, will cause the wind to blow. And then there shall be bright clouds. And rain will come upon your life. I say rain will come upon your life. How weak you are. Just ask him for revival. 
how weak and falling you are, just asking for a revival. How prayerless you are, how prayerless you are, just ask God for a revival. How look at you now, you cannot even have a good devotion. You cannot even read the scriptures well. Just ask God for a revival. Ask God for a revival and the Lord shall connect revival for you. I said the Lord shall connect revival for you. The steps God will take and no longer to go. The steps the Lord will take to bring up a weak man like you. The steps God will take to bring up a discouraged woman like you. The steps God will take to bring out an illiterate person like you. The steps God will take to bring up an unwilling mind, that, that unwilling mind that is in you. God will make bright clouds in your life. God will put peace upon your life. He will do it. That's why he just ask. Just ask. You are not too weak to us. Just ask. So not all your courage today to us. And then you will be going here with the good news. I think you will be going here with the good thing in your life. The Lord will do something. When you ask, when the church asks, and say, Oh God, show forth your glory in the church. Oh God, bring forth your revival upon the church. Oh God, may we see the power of your holiness. Oh God, let the Holy Ghost come upon the church. Oh God, let the revival come upon the church. Then in that prayer, the Lord knows what to do. The Lord knows what to do. The Lord will raise up men of revival among you. The Lord will raise up men of power among you. The Lord will bring to you a man of power. The Lord will bring to you a man of anointing that will cause that prayer to be answered in your life. So you can be joyful. So you can praise God. Ask the rain in the time of the later rain. The Lord will make bright, bright clouds. He will make bright clouds. He knows what to do. Just ask. Are you going to ask? I say, will you ask? No. The Lord will do wonders among you. That's what we are saying. That's what we are saying. Ask for a revival. Ask for righteousness. Ask for the Holy Ghost. Ask for yourself. Ask for the church. Ask for the society. God shall meet the connection. God shall bring the man of God for the revival we ask. Again, ask wisdom in terms. Chapter 1. I read this far. James 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth unto all men liberally and abradeth none, and it shall be given him. If anyone lacks wisdom, is there any lack you have seen in your life? Anything you lack, something wanting, ask God about it. That thing that is wanting in your life, ask God about it. That thing that is wanting in the church, ask God about it. That thing that is wanting in your family, ask God about it. That thing that is wanting in your economy, in your business, in your way, ask God about it. Yes. That thing wanting in the society. The Bible tells us the mother of Jesus went for a wedding. Jesus was there too. And there was no war. The last war. Jesus, I mean, the mother of Jesus asked Jesus and said, they have no war. That was the statement she made to Jesus. They have no war. That's what God wants you to do. Just tell him. Tell him the situation. Tell him what is lacking. Tell him what is lacking and watch the next action. The mother of Jesus knew well of the next action. He knew that she knew that Jesus must take action. That's why she told the servants, waiting, whatever he tells you, do it. Because I have dropped with him a request. And by the nature of God, he will not keep silent. He will do something about it. Therefore, whatever he tells you, do 
spirit. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Now, pray your power. Pray your power. Say, give us pray your power and effectiveness. The Bible says in that term, chapter 1 and 6, but let him ask in faith. Nothing will worry. But let him ask in faith. Ask with confidence. As you are going to pray now, a little time we stand up to pray, ask with confidence. Ask God with total trust. With total reliance. Ask and wait for the answer. Ask him and wait. Like a man that went into a shop and discusses with the shopman. He said, I want this, I want that. And as he told the person, he waited there. Because he knows the person is bringing what he has asked. So ask and wait. Ask with that expectation. Total trust. Refuse to doubt. Refuse to doubt. Ask until you are fully assured. Keep on asking. Until you are fully assured. That it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass as the Lord has said. Keep on asking in your life. Yes. That's what the Lord says. Again, in the book of Matthew. Chapter 21. Matthew. We want to read. Chapter. 22, verse 21. The Bible is encouraging us to keep on asking. Ask God without giving up. Ask the Father, please, chapter 21, verse 22, rather. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, Believing, ye shall receive. See, it's so clear. See, it's so plain. All things. Everybody say, all things. Say it again. Say it again. I give you a little time to think. What things actually are there in your life? That need asking. He said all things. What are those things. That give discouragement to your love. He has said. Ask all things. What is that thing that is blocking your way. He has said all things. What is that enemy force? Be they human or spiritual? That are fighting against your love. The Lord has said all things. Whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. Just believe you shall have it. Just believe you shall have it. That's what he said. And today, you will ask. I heard of a man of God that told members of his church that they should write whatever they want God to do for them. They should write their prayer request in a paper. And that they should go and drop it in a particular, a particular place. He went and dropped it there. Leave it there before God. He said, ask. So, have you asked? Today, we are going to leave your request in the presence of God. We are going to leave it here. Your request will be left in this place. And it will be left in the presence of God. When you ask, go home and be at peace. Like Hannah, go and eat your food. Pregnancy is coming. Answer is coming. Just drop the thing there. And go. Those noise will be silenced in your life. 
Yes, that's the word of God. Again, in the book of First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. The Bible says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire, we desire of Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him. Our confidence. Why are we assured? One, the testimonies of Bible saints. How God answered their prayers is the reason why we are confident today. That God will answer our prayers also. Two, the historical testimonies that we have heard right from all this world, from the history of Christianity. After our time, we have heard how God intervenes in people's lives, in family lives, how God answers prayers over His church, over His society and nation. That gives us the confidence. It gives us the confidence. That God will answer our prayers. Number three, contemporary testimonies. Testimonies of our fellow brothers and sisters. The one we can see, we're seeing them. And they testify, we hear them. That, that gives us assurance that God answers prayers. And that we too, we can come confidently. We too can come assured, assuredly. And that God will hear. Number four, our past testimonies. Even we ourselves, we have testimonies of answer prayers, hard circumstances of our lives, difficult situations we pass through. We pray, we call upon God, and the Lord answers. That gives us assurance that the requests of today, God will answer. The problems today, God will run away. We are confident upon this thing. Three things important in prayer. It says, this is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, just make sure what you are asking for, Jesus provided for it. What you are asking for, the promises of Scripture cover it. What you are asking for is a good thing. In purity and holiness. Something that is far good, not damaging to the cause of Christ. It is in the will of God. Make sure it is like that. Number two, the Bible says, this is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us. Know that God hears you. As you are asking, I am saying today, Church of God, today is a special day for your life. Our God is going to hear prayers in a special way. Children, where are you? Are you there? Youth, where are you? Are you there? Women, where are you? Are you there? Ah, me, are you there? I say today is a special day in your life. Special answer to prayers are coming on your way. God has prepared himself. God has cleared the sky for your prayer to ascend as the sacrifice of Abel. Your prayers will go up straight and acceptable in the sight of God. Praise the Lord! As you are praying, he is hearing. Know that he's hearing and then wait for the third thing, wait for the answer. Just go and wait. Just go and wait for the answer. I am assuring you, answer is coming. Answer will meet you in the house. Answer will meet you on the way. Answer will meet you in your business. Answer will meet you in the school. Answer will drop upon the church for you. Yes, get, get ready, get ready. That's the world. And finally, prayer privilege. What a great privilege today. What a great privilege today. Solomon had a great privilege. Elijah had a great privilege. The, and you have a great privilege. What was the privilege of Solomon? Look at it in the book of First Kings, chapter 3, from verse 3 to 12. First Kings, 
chapter 3, from verse 3, the Bible tells us here, saying, it says, And Solomon loved the law, walking in the statutes of David his father, only his sacrifice and burning incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place, a thousand burnt offerings the Solomon offer upon the altar. A thousand, if they are cows, a thousand cows. I don't think anybody had offered anything the lie before God. No one would have done something the lie. A thousand animals offered a bull before God. It cost a lot, but Yes, yeah, Solomon served his God in a costly way because he loved the Lord. The Bible said, and Solomon loved the Lord. So, when that happened, when that special consecration happened, when that special dedication happened, when that special offering happened, it touched the blind of God in heaven. And God came and met Solomon in verse 4. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. In a dream by night. And God said. Ask what I shall give thee. What an open door. Now. If God. Comes to me. And say church. Ask what I shall give thee. What will you ask. As a church. If the Lord. Now talks to you personally. Just like this Solomon. You love God. You are consecrated in serving God. You are dedicated in serving God. And the Lord has come and said, My child, ask what I shall give thee. That was a privilege. Solomon had. Solomon had. And Solomon got a great thing. Wisdom that surpassed the wisdom of men that had lived before him and after him. That is the wisdom he called by this great open door. This great open door. Ask what I shall give thee. And he got it from the Lord. Therefore, don't take today casually. It's a day of special request. It's a day of unique request. You will ask what God shall give thee. And another man had another special, special open door to his life. That man was Elisha. Look at it in Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. We read from this one. In Elisha had special open door. This special a privilege opened before him. In this one. And it came to pass. When the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a wild wind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets, that were at Bethel, came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. 
And 15 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view a far off. And they two stood by Jordan, and Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they went divided Gita and Tita, so that the two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, lay a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be sown to thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on, and thought that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took all of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord? God of Elijah. And we also have smitten the waters. They parted Kita and Tita. And Elijah went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view afar off, who were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the crown. Hallelujah! They bowed themselves to the crown before him. Elisha had served Elijah faithfully. When Elijah was to leave, Elisha stuck to him until the door opened unto him. Elijah said, Now, I've seen that we are faithful. We have worked together. We have labored together. We have moved together. We have suffered together. We have succeeded together. We have moved forward together. Now I am going. Ask what I shall give you. I tested you and known that you are serious. I tested you and known that you are faithful. I have seen your commitment. I have seen your dedicated spirit. Ask. What do I do for you before I go? Ask. What I shall give you. What do you want? God has given me the license to bestow upon you what you want. God has given me authority to give to your life what you want. God has given me the power to make a difference in your life, a difference in your ministry. God has instructed me to put anointing somewhere and ask, what do you want? He said a double anointing, a double power. Double miracle, double wonder, double fight, double everything, double in your life. I want double grace, double everything, wonderful everything in the double form. If you have it in two hundred, in hundred percent, Elijah, I want it in two hundred percent. If you have it in one thousand, Elijah, I want two thousand. If you have it in ten thousand, Elijah, I want twenty thousand. If you have a million, I want two. Two million. Double anointing. Double. Oh Lord, the doors are open for double today. I said the doors are open for double today. As you ask this special day, make a special request. My brother, we have worked together. We have labeled. Sister, I have seen your diligence. Now I want to bestow some good things in your life. I want to pour some good blessings upon your life. What do you want? Anointing is coming now. Open your mouth. What do you want? Something is happening today. Rise up upon your feet. Something is happening today. Something is happening today.
Some good things are happening. Some changes are coming. Some anointing is coming upon your life. Ah, open your mouth. Let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. Yes, let me hear, hear you talk to God what you're looking for. The Lord himself is saying, ah, ask what I shall give thee. What I shall give thee? What shall I do unto you? What do you want in your life? What a special day today. What a special day is today. Nineteen is coming to double for me. Ask what I shall give thee. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. The Lord wants to do something in your life. The Lord wants to put something in your life. Something double. Something double. He wants to put power there. He wants to put power there. The Lord wants to bless you. The Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants a mountain to be transferred unto you. Ask what you want. Send down your power, Lord. Oh, power, Lord, devour. A call, we say, send down your power, Lord. 
the grace upon your church. Lord, anointing, anointing, send anointing. Father, bestow your blessings and goodness upon the people. The goodness of the Lord, the kindness of the Lord. Let it come, O Lord, upon your people. Let your power, Lord, move among them. Let the glory of the Lord be seen. Father, let your glory be seen. unto you. Earth, it shall be given unto you. Yea, it shall be given. It shall be given unto you. Solomon special wisdom. He gave Solomon special wisdom. He gave him riches and honor. Yes. Let that God fill your treasures. Let that God fill your treasures. Let that God fill your treasures. Let that God fill your let him fill you up. Let the doors be open unto you. Let God set before you open door. May the Lord cause you to enter into His treasure. May the Lord take you into His secret places. Yes. To meet you in her treasure. The blessings of Abraham should be yours. The blessings of Abraham shall be yours. The name 
Lord Jesus to be strong in your love. shall give thee. Ask what I shall give thee. What do you want me to do for thee before I'm taken from thee? from your law. Let liberty come upon your law. Let something different happen. In Jesus' name, in your life. Let the power of our God come upon your life. Let double anointing come upon you. In Jesus' name. Let there be total loosening in your life. Yes. Let the love lift you up. Let the love lift you up. Let the Lord put maturity in your life. Let the Lord make you a great person. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of our God take over your life. Take over your spirit. Take over your soul. Move your body. In Jesus name. The Lord make you victorious. The Lord make you triumphant. The Lord make you vessel unto honor. In the name of Jesus. The past has come. A new thing has happened. A new thing has happened. May the Lord make you go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. the desires of your heart. I command those desires to come. I command them to happen in your life. In Jesus' name. A special gift today. 
special blessing today. The blessing that came upon Solomon. Because he asked as the Lord opened that door. The blessing that came upon Elisha. Because he asked as the Lord opened that door. I say the blessing come upon your life now. Let the blessing come upon your life now. Oh no, let the blessing come upon your life now. We see. We see. We see. Men and women, we see. We see. In the name of Jesus. All yokes, all tears, I pray to God, they will be wiped away tonight. All yokes must be broken tonight. All long standing sicknesses, I say God, they will disappear now. In the name of Jesus. All family problems, family difficulties, my God will bring them before you. Clear them up. I say clear them up. And let your people be free. Let your people be delivered. Let your people be filled with your goodness. Let your power demonstrate over their lives. Allah in Jesus name. Let the peace of God fill your heart. Let the peace of God fill your mind. Let your family know peace. I come, I speak peace to your family. I speak peace to your family. And that spirit causing trouble, I command it. Get out from that family. In the name of Jesus. I speak prosperity to you. Prosperity in your world. Prosperity in your business. Prosperity in your family. I command prosperity to come from heaven. Let it come now. Let it cover you now. Let it fill your house now. We see. We see. In the name of Jesus. Every failure here shall be turned to success. Every tongue that the devil put it there. Every mind confusion. I rebuke them out. I command blessing. I command success. I command success. I command progress in your life. And I speak brilliance to these children. You will be brilliant. You will perform excellently. In the name of Jesus. God in heaven. I open the windows of heaven, O Lord, by your authority. I say, let the blessings be coming down. Yes, my brother is receiving his own. My sister is receiving her own. The children are receiving their own. Everywhere is blessing. Everywhere is blessing. Everywhere is miracle. Everywhere is fantastic. The blessings of God. The goodness of God. The power of God. Receive everywhere. All corners of the house and those outside, everywhere, be soaked. Be soaked. Be soaked in the name of Jesus. Be soaked in the name of Jesus. It is done in your life. It is done in your children. It is done in your family. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah! He has done so much for me. He has taken Jesus did so much for me. He has done so much for you. For me. You have just listened to the man of God, Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director 
of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide, with headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other messages and literature of the ministry, contact 081-3635-6813 or 080-56-834323 or email Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. Thank you.